What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of how to elevate your portraits and content as a photographer using apps like Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and Express. Now we have been having a great time thus far, but if you have missed any part of the series thus far, I want you to pause, like literally pause. I know some of you guys are still here. So if you missed it, please pause. Okay. <laughs> I want you to go back and rewatch episodes one through three, because we are taking the topics we've talked about in previous episodes and adding them into our newer episodes, right? So we're going to take topics from episode one through three and add to it episode four. So make sure you go back and watch those episodes again, and please go ahead and subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel while you go do that. Now, if you are completely caught up, let's dive into episode four, where we're going to be talking about color play. I don't even know if this is like a real term. This is a term that I, I don't even want to claim it. Honestly, to be honest, I don't know if this is a term I came up with or if it's something that people say, but I love the concept of playing around with color, right? And colors are so, 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 so impactful to portraiture in general. It is something that will help elevate your work even further when you are intentional about the colors that you plan for your shoots, but also how you edit color in Lightroom and Photoshop and all of the editing apps. So for today's episode, we're gonna be diving into the topics of color theory and also kind of taking a step further talking about how you can really play around with color with your adjustment layers in Adobe Photoshop, specifically hue and saturation. Before we dive into the editing, I want to talk to you all a little bit about colors and why colors are so impactful when it comes to portraiture. For me, colors have emotion. They make you feel something, right? Blue isn't just the color blue, right? Blue makes me feel maybe calm, whereas red makes me feel maybe more so fiery or in love. Yellow makes me feel happy. So colors have feeling, they have emotion behind that. And knowing that you can really take those concepts behind color and add it into your portraiture. And also taking it a bit further, there are specific colors that work really well together, right? And that is when you get into the concept of color theory. So color theory is just the scientific aspect behind colors in which colors go well together. So you have four different types that I want to talk about today. You have analogous, triadic, complementary, and monochromatic. Um, analogous are the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Triadic are colors that are equally spaced on the color wheel. Complementary are colors that are opposite of each other on the wheel. And then monochromatic are just colors within a specific hue. So I'll also show you all examples of what that looks like. So here we have two different examples. Um, the analogous is going to be, again, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, while triadic are going to be colors that are equally spaced from each other on the color wheel. Then you have monochromatic, which are going to be colors that are within the same hue. And then complementary, which are colors that are directly opposite of each other. So this is just an example of what these colors look like and how you can utilize them in practice for your portraits. So I love to be intentional about color, not only when I am doing my editing, but all the way going back to when I'm prepping for a shoot, right? So if I am shooting in studio, and this is gonna be really, really great for the example that I'll walk through today. If I'm shooting a studio and maybe I am wanting to shoot with a yellow background, I may want my subject to wear blue because I know that those colors are complementary to each other, right? They really sit well with each other just based off of the color wheel. So you can be intentional with what colors you have your subjects wear, what backgrounds you pick, and those are the kind of decisions that are going to elevate your portraits a bit further, right? That level of intentionality is going to take your work to the absolute next level. So let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Photoshop where we're gonna edit today's portrait. So we're gonna go ahead and actually get started in Lightroom just to prep this image for all the work we're gonna do in Photoshop. So I'm gonna come up to my um, color profiles where I'm gonna really focus on changing the color profile to probably this vivid. I want the colors to really pop in this image. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make some basic adjustments just to get the image to a good place for my editing. Now I'm gonna come down to my HSL sliders where here I'm going to really focus on that yellow and blue. I really like how these colors sit and that blue is really like a nice contrast to the yellow. So I'm just gonna play around with the hue and saturation and the luminance of each of these colors to see where I would like this to fall. We are going to be doing the bulk of our just coloring in Photoshop with the hue and saturation 
adjustment layer, but I think this is just really helpful to kind of get it prepped and kind of get a good starting point. So that's our before and after before Photoshop. Now we're gonna go ahead and send this image over. All right, so now we are in Photoshop. As always, we're gonna duplicate our layer. And I first actually wanna utilize Generative Expand to kind of clean up this background. So I'm gonna do that. Click on the Generative Fill. And then this way it'll kind of get rid of those like um, backdrops at the top. I want it to just be a fully yellow background. Bam, just like that. We used um, Generative Fill to kind of fix that. I'm gonna merge these two layers together. Oh, actually, before I do that, I did notice that I had this little kind of tag on the outfit. I don't want that there, so I'm gonna use Generative Fill to remove that as well. All right, awesome, that is done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and merge these layers together just because I'm not coming back to it and I want to now expand the background um, just to make it a bit bigger. So I'm gonna zoom out, pull out there, and I'm using just the crop tool for this. I know you can't see that, but I'm using the crop tool. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out to where I'm pleased and then click on generate. That way we're gonna kind of expand out that yellow background. I want it to be um, taking up a lot of the shot. Awesome, so now that is done. Now we're going to go ahead and focus on our coloring. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge those layers together. That way we are done with that. And we're gonna go ahead and open up our selective color. I'm going to be doing this to focus on just editing his skin a bit. And actually, I'm going to go back and delete this layer and select my subject. So then that way I'm not adjusting the yellows in the background, but only the yellow and the reds in his skin. So you made that selection going to there we go. And then we'll do the reds and the yellows. So I'm happy with that and that's the before and after. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna now move into just going into the yellows, making sure that I'm happy with that for his skin as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group that together and kind of rename that layer um, or that group skin just so I know what I utilize those layers for. And now we're gonna get into the fun with hue and saturation. So hue and saturation is really great because you have this slider. We're just gonna focus on the master slider um, cause I just wanna edit all the colors together. You're gonna see here as I'm going up and down the slider, it's changing the colors of both his suit and the background. I just love how the colors complement each other. Of course, you're seeing that it's editing his skin as well, which we do not want. So I'm gonna delete this layer. I'm gonna go ahead and make another hue and saturation layer. And what we're going to do is make a mask or remove him from the mask, right? So we don't want him to be affected by the changes we're making. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush tool. I'm gonna make sure that it is on the, let's see, is it on the white? Okay, so no, you're gonna wanna make sure it's on black. So then that way you are removing and not adding. So as I'm going in here, I'm just gonna kind of paint over his body. Now, actually, you're not seeing me do anything here. Um, so I actually think what I'm gonna do is make an actual adjustment to the hue and saturation layer. So that way I can make sure that I am actually taking out his skin. So we're just kind of cleaning that up. And then now, there we go. Now I'm kind of coming in 
and I can see where the color is impacting his skin and I can just kind of paint that out because I don't want his skin impacted. And I'm gonna speed this up for you guys because this took a while. <laughs> this took some time, um, but all you really wanna do is just you go back and forth with your brush tool between that black and white layer to add and remove. Of course, as you guys can see, as I'm removing the mask, you can see that there is this like yellow Hi, um, kind of halo around his finger and his feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that by going back to the white um, layer, but just kind of going back and forth and painting until I get a place where I'm satisfied. Just got a little bit more here. So we can take this off this space. I'm gonna come in here and kind of clean up the air, the ear area as well. I don't really care about the earring, like that's fine, that can change colors, but I just really don't want him to be changing color. So this part is really tedious, but you're just gonna wanna make sure that you're at least making it as accurate as possible. Like it's, this is gonna be just for social media, so I don't need this to be perfect, but I just don't wanna be, I don't want it to be noticeable, honestly. I feel like editing feet on live is so weird, so I do apologize, but I wanna kinda of get in here and make sure I get rid of all of that as well. And I just like changing the colors as well because I just feel like it helps me see what I'm missing too. Like you guys can see, like I'm getting his fingers, there's a little bit of blue on his chest. So those are the things that I want to be able to take out because I didn't, I wasn't seeing them previously with other colors. So I'm just kind of changing the color as I go to make sure that I'm getting everything. And as you can see here, as I'm going down the slider, it's just changing the overall colors. And I just love this. I want to make this into like a little animation almost. And I think I'll put that at the end of this tutorial for you guys to see the colors just changing. I think that it looks really dope. So I hope that y'all enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel. And I will catch y'all in the next episode where we're gonna talk about how to create mood boards in Adobe Express. I'll see y'all there.